praise the Lord. Friday finally got here. And uh, Lord bless you. Glad you joined us this morning uh, with our Daily with God devotion. Uh, this week, our series has been uh, dealing with uh, should you be the judge, dealing with how we, we judge others. Uh, I mean, the truth is there are some folks uh, through a lifetime of really working at it have become professional judges of other people, okay? And I can guarantee you this, it's not always worked out well for them. It really hasn't. Uh, we've covered a lot of ground this week so far. We'll kind of finish it up today and tomorrow. won't take too long. Uh, should you be the judge? And, of course, if we listen to the Word of, the, uh, of God, uh, Christ will tell us sometimes uh, it, it depends, okay? Uh, sometimes, and probably very few times, it would be a yes, and then there's other times it would be an absolute no, Um we saw the destructive judgment. Uh, I mean, it's wicked. Uh, if, if if you're judging someone in such a way that it's not to be a blessing to them and a help to them and and to somehow uh, help them get out of where they're at, uh, possibly in some sin, and it would have to be uh, very tactful. It would have to be very prayerful. And it would absolutely have to be led by the Holy Spirit to do that. You get out there on your own and start judging, folks. You're going to make a mess of it, and, and uh, it'll be a train wreck just waiting to happen. So there's there's a lot of ifs that go into the picture there, uh, only led by the Spirit of God, only with a right attitude, only with a corrective spirit, not a condemning spirit. And, and then we saw there's a couple reasons uh, why you shouldn't be judging others, and they ought to be very evident to us. First of all, uh, because we're all capable of falling into sin. Uh, we are all fallible. We can all really blow it under a given situation. And, and so that certainly doesn't put us in a position to be the judge of others uh, when we're capable of falling into sin ourselves. We also saw it was dangerous uh, uh, to, to get into a judgmental spirit because you don't always know all the facts. You don't always know the whole the whole story. And the truth is, when you start judging others, uh, you're trying to take God's place. God's the judge. Uh, you know, uh, don't try to play God. That'll not work out well for you either. And, and, and then we saw that, you know what, deluded judgment is wrong. We saw that yesterday. Um, here, here's the thing. Jesus made it very clear. Uh, you've got to take care of your own sins before you can even consider uh, being judgmental towards somebody else's sins. In fact, we're going to begin there, and, and we're going to kind of take off from that point. Uh, a few of these verses we've kind of went over a few times, and we still are. Uh, Matthew chapter 7. Look at Matthew chapter 7 with me, please. And we're going to read verses 3 through 5 once again. And this is the very words of Jesus himself. He said, And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye? but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye. How in the world can you be looking at the faults of someone else uh, and not see your own faults first? How will you, he said in verse 4, or how will thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine own eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. And then Jesus really nails it down in verse 5. Thou hypocrite. Wow. Thou hypocrite. First cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote of thy brother's eye. And, and that brings us uh, to this morning's devotion. You know what? Discriminating judgment could be wise. We've looked at some reasons why it'd be very wrong to be judgmental. Uh, but Jesus said, under a right, perfect condition, I believe prayerfully, led by the Spirit of God, and probably even in very rare, rare situations, uh, could you? Would it be wise for you to be judgmental and try to help correct somebody uh, in a way that would not be condemning, but correcting uh, that they might bring them to repentance and get right with God? There's two words that Jesus used that really, really makes this clear how it must be done. And most folks aren't willing. Most folks aren't willing to do this, or should I say, most folks will not do this. Uh, here it is. 
Remember what you looked, said yesterday? How do you look at the faults of somebody else? Oh, man, you get you get the big, biggest telescope you can get. You want to really blow it up. And, and how do you look through your own your own fault? Well, through a little microscope. Um, you know, you see others, but you don't see your faults. You don't see your failures. You don't, somehow you just don't see your own shortcomings, do you? You really don't. But notice what, there's two words that stand out in verse 5. Jesus said, thou hypocrite, first, first. There's the uh, number one word I want you to uh, underline in your mind or, or, or circle it as we think of this. First, here's what must be done first. First, cast out the bee now thine own eye. And then here's the second important word. And then, and I can tell you this, and only then <laughs> shall thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. The, the the world wants to remember the first, but they don't want to think about the then, <laughs> you know. Uh, I mean, it's God that's joined these two words together. And Jesus is saying, you must judge yourself first. You must take care of your own sins, your own faults, your own failures, your own shortcomings. You must do that first, or you will never make it over to the then where you can actually help somebody else, okay? You've got to judge yourself first before you obviously can be capable uh, or be spiritual enough to judge others. Uh, it's, so it, it's only when you see your own sins correctly that you can e see other sins clearly, okay? Uh, like I said, we make much out of finding fault with other people. And many times people do that, I believe. Just if you can if you can really blow up the faults of somebody else somehow in some weird self-righteous way, it'll make some of you feel better about yourself. Better that maybe you're not involved in that particular sin or not do, not not involved in that uh, particular shortcoming. Uh, so if we can make others look bad, you think you can make yourself look better. And, uh, boy, if that don't feed the pride and the ego, I don't know what does. That is self-righteousness at its best, okay? But it's only when you see your own sins correctly that you can see other sins clearly. Only the person uh, that has enough humility, uh, humble enough to see your own sins, will be healthy enough, will be spiritually healthy enough uh, to see his brother's sins in a way to be uh, corrective and helpful. You know, a after David, had con he had to confront his own sins before he could be a blessing to anybody else. You know, that's one of my favorite psalms, so we'll turn there real quick. Uh, psalms 51, he had sinned the horrible sin of Bathsheba, and of course having Uriah uh, basically put to death on the front line. And Psalms 51 is a great, Psalm of David's confession before God. He sees himself as God sees him, as a horrible sinner. And he's crying out for cleansing. Clean me. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Uh, make me to hear joy and gladness again. Man, he had lost his joy. He had lost his victory. He had lost the blessing of God. Uh, in the, the just a few verses I want to look at is verse 10, 10 through 12. David had to deal with his own sins before he was able to really be helpful to anyone else. Create in me a clean heart. Psalms 51, verse 10. O God, renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Uphold me with thy free spirit. He's praying for himself his own sins, his own cleansing. He's not finding fault with everybody else. He sees all the fault is upon himself, and he's praying for God to forgive him and cleanse him. And then finally, verse 13, when God does that, then he's capable to help others. Verse 13, then will I teach transgressors thy ways. Hey, then he'll tell other sinners the way of God and what's right and what's wrong what's righteous, what's wicked. And sinners shall be converted 
unto thee. I hope you get a hold of that this morning because that literally tells us that we've got to take care of our own sins before we can be beneficial, before we can give healthy advice to others that are also living in sin. I mean, it's important to understand uh, that we got to take care of self first, okay? So uh, there's got to be a right spirit, a right attitude, prayerful, led by the Holy Spirit, uh, the, taking care of your own sin first. There's just a whole lot that goes into this. And until you figure all this out, it would just be absolutely to your best interest not to be judgmental of anyone, <laughs> okay? It really would. Uh, and, and unless you can do it the way Jesus said to do it, you better just leave judgment to God, but leave it alone, okay? Uh, God bless you. We're going to stop there. We'll finish this up. Be kind of brief in the morning. We'll finish this up tomorrow. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you. Thank you for the good study we've had on this week uh, about being judgmental of others. Lord, and I, I can see clearly that being judgmental of others much of the time, most of the time, is more harmful to us than anything else. So, Lord, I pray, would you teach us this week that, uh, Lord, you're the judge. We don't need to try to take your place. Uh, and, and, Lord, if, if we, if we was, was to be judgmental in any way to correctively somebody, let us take care of our own sin first. Lord, give us wisdom. Really give us wisdom. We need wisdom to deal with this area in our lives. Uh, Lord, we always pray this. Everybody that's watching, if somebody really has a need today, I pray they'll call on Jesus. Lord, meet that need, and we ask you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great Friday. Uh, and in the morning, we will finish this up, and I, I believe it'll be kind of brief. Lord bless you. Have a great day.